Okay, we're going to be covering basic wiring and setup for the Nexus BACnet Lighting Controller. So what we have here is our Nexus BACnet Lighting Controller. We have a couple of distribution blocks for breakout boards, a class 2 24 volt DC isolated power supply, two of our five wire uh, smart switch stations, two of our five wire indoor multi-sensors, the sense motion and light sensing. And we have two relay firing cards uh, with relays. So to begin, the first thing we need to do is bring power to our lighting controller. It's the yellow, yellow spring-loaded dinkle connection here at the bottom. Uh, all of our connections for power on touch point devices are yellow, yellow, and all of our communications are green, black, red. So the first thing we need to do is bring power to the lighting controller. It, all of the yellow yellow power connections are not polarity sensitive, so it, it, it does not matter uh, which side positive and negative go on. So you just need to land your positive and your negative. <clears throat> okay, and after we do that, we'll move over to our relay firing cards. The two relay firing cards we're using have already been pre-addressed for address one and address two. So the first thing we need to do is we just use standard Cat5e patch cables. And we'll go from the Ethernet jack, label two firing cards, plug in there. And then the upper and lower portion of the firing cards are just passed through. Uh, RJ45 jacks, so it does not matter whether you start at the top or the bottom. So we'll land to the top and then go from the bottom to the next one. Could be top or bottom, does not matter. And then if you're not using the RJ45 patch cables, the other way it could be wired is you could uh, land it in a distribution block and then run power and communications cabling over to your first controller and then you'll jump over uh, to your next controller. So that would be the optional way to wire it. And then once your firing cards are, are plugged in, uh, you just need to land your relays in there. And again, these just use standard Cat5e uh, patch cables. And they just plug in. And so we just need to plug all of our relays in. Okay, and that's it for the relay firing cards. So we'll move on to the smart switch network. So our smart switch network is a smart switch port here. It's a three wire RS-485 connection, green, black, red. Red being positive, black negative, and green is the shield or ground wire. And all of the five wire smart switch devices get wired in a daisy chain fashion. So essentially you start at the panel, you'll go to your first uh, five wire station or sensor, and then from that daisy chain to your next station or sensor uh, for your whole chain. So essentially what we've got here is we'll, we'll start at the controller or panel, and we'll go to our first station or smart switch, and then on down the line. Uh, we've got four devices here. So, and these devices as well have already been pre-addressed. And the two pin power connection is the yellow yellow, and the three pin red black green is for communications. So we'll plug all these devices in. <clears throat> And same for our sensors, uh, same color code. Yellow, yellow is power, green, black, red is for communications. And the blue wire is just a uh, 24 volt dry contact. So if you want to use it for a third party device, the, you, could, you could trigger a different device with that. Sensor. Okay, and 
when uh, sensors and smart stations are powered up, you'll see on the stations, they'll, they'll scroll through the LEDs and sensors will have a solid white or pinkish colored LED on and they'll remain that way until they're discovered um, by the controller. So we'll plug in our smart switch connection here, red, black, green, and our smart switch port. And then as the controller discovers them, the LEDs will, will go out. So station one is discovered, station two is discovered, and both lights went out on our sensors. So these are all discovered. <clears throat> so the, the only other wiring connection is our BACnet RS485 MSTP connection. And again, it's just a red, black, green connector. So you'll plug in your BACnet MSTP network, and we're pre-addressed at MSTP address number one. And so the last thing to do is everything's now wired up for the controller. It is on the controller. We'll go to the options dip switches, and we'll turn on dip switch number seven. And we can see here under our stations, we've already discovered station one, two, three, and four, which is our, our two wall stations and our two sensors. So now we're going to discover the rest of the stuff on the network. So with dip switch seven on, we press the clear discover button and it will discover, rediscover our, our stations and our firing cards. So now we have our, our four station or input devices and we discovered firing card number one and number two. So once that's done, to complete it, you just turn off dip switch number seven, and then to complete the process, you need to power cycle the controller. So just pull power and then power back on. And the reason for that is once you discover all the devices with the controller, the controller builds the BACnet object database on a power cycle. So when it powers up all the discovered devices, it will build all of your binary uh, inputs and analog value uh, inputs and et cetera for your backnet communications.